Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Bastion. How are y'all doing today? Today, we're doing something a little bit different. We're playing uh, what's called Coden Game, which is a game that you control with programming. For those of you who don't know, in real life, I am a front-end developer. That means I'm a web developer. I build websites, but in particular, I build the front-end part. So anything a user actually interacts with on a page, I build. That's the type of stuff I do. So this was recommended to us by someone else on the stream, uh, Arving Ska, a good friend of ours, and he wanted to see us do some coding game because he had some fun with it. Uh, I've actually already done the onboarding just to kind of get a feel for the editor and things like that, but we're gonna go through it again and kind of talk through what my solution was and give you guys a feel for it as well. How's that sound? Yeah, let's hop into it. This is really cool because it combines like my, I don't need tutorials. Tutorials are for, for chumps. It combines my love of programming with my like love of video games as well, right? So this is actually a really complicated thing called a ternary. It's not really complicated, but complicated enough. Basically for this, you can see kind of the, what it wants up there in the top, right? The Coden game planet is being attacked by its slimy insectoid aliens. To protect the planet, you can implement the pseudocode provided in the statement below. So basically, we have our variables being defined up here. Enemy 1 is just the name of the enemy. Distance 1 is how far away enemy 1 is. Enemy 2 is the name of the second enemy. Distance 2 is how far away that enemy is. And we basically want to shoot whichever enemy is closest to us. And we shoot by logging out that enemy's name. So, basically, if we code out exactly what I said there, if, and it feels really weird because I'm not on my like actual development machine, so I don't have like my chiclet keyboard, I have my gaming keyboard and et cetera, et cetera, but I'm, I'm not gonna complain about that. So if enemy one, so distance one, is less than distance two, so if enemy one is closer, then we wanna, log out enemy one otherwise we want to log out enemy two and this is making the assumption that enemy one is never equal to enemy two so we do that test case we succeed crush the enemies easy god we're so good so good so what i did was i took this whole like everything there and we condensed it down into a single line using what's called a ternary. So basically a ternary has uh, a Boolean or what is like an if statement. So this is our if, if distance one is less than distance two. And then with this question mark denotes that it's a ternary. That means that do the first case the on the first side of this colon if it's true and the second case the second side of the colon if it's false. So if this is true, it does enemy one. If it's false, it does enemy two. It's exactly the same as the if loop or if loop. No, if the as the if branching we did above, and we can see if we run the code, it outputs what we expect here. Yeah, yeah. And there we go. Easy peasy. Like I said, though, already did that one just to kind of get a feel for it. Next one we're hopping into is The Descent, which I haven't done, I haven't even seen it yet. So this one's apparently loops. The while loop represents the game. Each iteration represents a turn of the game where you are given inputs, the heights of the mountain, and where you have to print an output, the index of the mountain to fire upon. The inputs you are given are automatically updated according to your last actions. So we want to destroy the mountain before the starship collides with one of them. So we want to shoot the highest mountain on the path. Each game, we want to shoot the highest mountain. Okay. Interesting. So we have a couple ways that we can do this. But basically, we get here a bunch of, um, we loop through and get the height of each mountain. And I is the index. So that's like where it is in the list of mountains. So if you had like just a list of numbers, one, two, three, four, five, like that is their index. 
So we want to, in this for loop, shoot the highest amount. So for loops are interesting. Basically, we have this case where it defines a variable and then it defines in like a, a Boolean, which is i is less than eight. So this variable here, i is less than eight. For as long as i is less than eight, we want to run this loop. And at the end of the loop, if i is not less than eight, then we do i plus plus, which is just i plus one. So basically, we define i, and then it'll run through this loop eight times, incrementing i each time. So what we're going to do is we're going to find another variable, which is uh, shooty mick bang bang. No, <laughs> but it's going to just be like mountain to shoot. And that is going to be um, zero. And we're going to do max height is zero. We're going to do a nice simple solution here. And basically here, if the mountain height is greater than the max height, then we want to set the max height equal to mountain height. And we want to set the mountain to shoot equal to I. And then we want to console.log mountain to shoot. And that should be what we want. Ah, oh, so good. One mountain. It's just going to keep going back and forth, shooting this mountain down. Boom. Easy. So does that solution kind of make sense to y'all? Basically, as we loop through the mountains, if the mountain that we're currently looking at is taller than our current max height, then we want to set our max height equal to that mountain and make that mountain the next one that we want to shoot. Yeah? Kind of straightforward, but it, it does... I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily use this for, like... Um, learning to program it def it definitely has an expectation that you know some of your basics before you just kind of jump in another thing to know is that we we weren't using proper test driven development here there are certain practices um, that you would use for more complex problems where you use these test cases and you just solve the test cases one by one to help make your code a little bit better but i figured this one was easy enough that we could skip that step a little bit Boom. Yeah. No, I don't want to share this ever. 0% of the time do I ever want to share it. Next, what we got? Coding contest. You have like recommendations for me? All right. So, it looks like past those two, they don't have like a, a set of recommendations for you to just kind of go through. So I actually want to like jump to a medium difficulty puzzle and see how that goes. So this is going to be Shadows of the Night episode 1. Ooh, episodic. And we have to do something here with Batman. You have to match indexes and a list of two-dimensional arrays and discover the binary search algorithm and then it makes you know that Batman is really good at cleaning windows. All right, so coordinate you have to guess the coordinate of a bomb. Ooh, okay. So we basically have to do a binary search. So they're asking us to build a binary search. So Batman will look for the hostages on a given building by jumping from one window to the other using his grapnel gun. <laughs> his goal is to jump to the window where the hostages are located in order to disarm the bombs. Unfortunately, he has a limited number of jumps before the bombs go off. Before each jump, the heat signature device will provide Batman with the direction of the bombs based on Batman's current position. Your mission is to program the device so that it indicates the location of the next window Batman should jump to in order to reach the bomb's room as soon as possible. Hmm. Ooh, this is hard. 
This is really hard. Okay. Wow. So we got a... Basically, go back and forth and up and down with a binary search. So binary search is if you imagine that um, we have, say, this list of numbers, right? If we want to do a binary search here, like if you want to do a normal search, if you're like, oh, I want to hit all the numbers, right? You go like, first, let's check zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then five, and all the way down, right? But that would take a long time. If I have something that tells me that what my number that I want is higher or lower, then what I can do is I can start halfway through. So I cut it in half, basically a binary, zero or one. And if it's not five, then we know if it's less than or more than five. And if it's less than five, we cut that in half and check two or three. And then we check again. And that cuts down the number of jumps we need to get to the specific right case it cuts it down dramatically and special terms it will be it takes us from o of n to o of log n and big o is like the complexity how hard a problem is to solve for a computer so making it easier for a computer to solve makes everything go faster so if we switched a computer from using just like going through dumbly and checking to a binary search algorithm it could do a lot of things a lot faster so we basically have to do or we want to have kind of a if i were to write this out in pseudocode then we want to have a minimum x a maximum x a minimum y and a maximum y and then we use those to decide on our binary when we do our binary jumps, right? So let's start there. Let's define our variables. So we have the width, we have the height, we have our initial x, y. So let's set our min x and y to zero. Uh, and then max x, max y is going to be equal to uh, the width of the building. And the height of the building. And the maximum number of turns for the game is over. We don't really care about that. We're just going to try and do the, the best case every time as best as we can. So you can see kind of a few different things here we're using when we define variables. We use const, which is a constant. That means that's not going to be redefined. And then we use um, var or let for variables that will be redefined. You can think of variables as just like a container to hold a little bit of information here. This is going to get really complex. So for those of you who aren't super familiar with programming, I apologize for this algorithm we're about to... <laughs> uh, build and oh we need like a, a current position as well ba -ba -ba. so the direction of the bomb we have uh, a handful of cases we have up, upright, right, bottom right, bottom, all the way in every direction. But we're going to split those up. If the bomb direction is two characters long, then we know that the first character is going to be either up or down. You can see it right here. So if it's two characters, we know that first character is always going to be up or down. Otherwise, it's going to be one character. And then we actually have to pick the direction. So if it's one character, we're going to do a switch, which is a way to do kind of a longer um, 
if statement. All right, so to give you full disclosure here, I did just have to look up the uh, syntax for a switch statement. <laughs> so much of programming is just looking things up. You never can remember everything, but as long as you can remember where to find it, that's the important part. But we basically have this switch. We have a few different cases. Cases are like what this variable equals. So we know that the bomb dir is either going to be up. I'm just going to write out all the cases here. Right. That's not how that works. Uh, da, 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 down. And left are our four cases here. And so if it's up, then we want to basically set our next y. So let's go ahead and make a couple new variables here for our next y and next x. Then we want our next y to equal the halfway point between our current y and the maximum y. So our current y plus maximum y divided by 2. And PIMDAS, make sure that we have this right. And then break. Break is just to be like, OK, that's the end of this case. All right, a little bit of uh, technical difficulties here. But now we're going to commit the sin of copying and pasting code. You should never copy and paste code, but it's pretty similar here. In the case where we want to go down, we want to go between this Y, like the current Y and the minimum Y. And now we're going to do something very similar for right and left, except we're going to be setting the next X. That's not X. 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 Perfect. So that's going to be all of our up, down, right, left binary search cases handled for us. But looking at this, we can actually take out these next variables and just use the current cur y cur x and actually simplify our code a little bit. So cur is what we're always going to be jumping to. We're going to use a little template string here. Cur x. Cur y. So template string is just a way to make a string using variables. This is going to output x space y here. And now, dun, dun, dun. I feel like we're about to have a lot of duplicate code here. But let's see if we can avoid that. We could just do an, another switch statement. But that would feel kind of gross. Instead, what I want to do is, well, basically a switch statement. So we have two cases for the first character and two cases for the second character here. So if the first character is you, then same as the up or the you case here, we just want to do that. Otherwise, if it's not you, it's going to be D. So we want to go halfway to the minimum. Are y'all lost yet? Because I'm totally lost in my own <laughs> programming. And then for the second character, if that is R, then we want to do this, but with the X value. Cur X. 
Cur X, Max X. Else. Boop. That's not where I wanted you to go. That's not where I wanted you to go either. Let's try that again. Oh, did I change my keyboard? Yep, okay. So fun fact, I use two different keyboard layouts. When I'm programming, I use Dvorak, uh, which is a special keyboard layout that only nerds use. And when I'm not programming, I use your typical QWERTY layout. So I just accidentally switch back to QWERTY and I'm like, why is nothing working? What are you complaining about? Oh, an extra equal sign, that's fine. And I think that's actually all of it. Let's see how it falls apart. Ooh, hoo, 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 totally fell apart. Y is not defined. Oh, because that's supposed to be H. Oh, that, that didn't take long. Try again. Invalid input expected integer. Ooh. <laughs> so this is our fault here. Basically, what we got here is we had, say, a max height of three, and Batman was at zero. So it took the halfway point between three and zero, and that was 1.5, which is obviously incorrect. So what we're going to do is wherever we set Y, we're going to do a floor. Or actually, we're just going to do it here at the end. And X as well. So what this is going to do... We could do a round, but floor is basically going to take just chop off that decimal point. There's probably a case where this doesn't work. Rip. All right, that didn't work. Let's just do a round. Instead of trying to be fancy with the floor. Hmm. Hold on, I gotta think about this now. Because it can't just be around. We actually want it to um round up or down based on which direction we're trying to go in. So let's try this. More technical difficulty, sorry about that, but we're back. So if we're going up or to the right, we want to take the ceiling, which means we want to go up. So if it's 1.5, we want to go to 2. If it's 1.1, we want to go to 2. But if we're going down or to the left, we want to take the floor like we were defaulting to before. Where we just chop the decimal point off. That means that we will always bias in the direction of the bomb that we're trying to explode. This is not dry code so dry means don't repeat yourself since we have like the same code in multiple places we have to change a lot of code whenever we want to make just one update which is why this is a little bit painful ideally what i'd want to do is get an algorithm that's working and then we'll come back and we'll dry our code up and push things out into their own methods right afterwards and kind of make things just cleaner, easier to understand, easier to update in the future. Let's see if this works. What? Oh, am I upside down? Oh, do they have Y zero at the top? Oh my gosh, okay. So instead of it being Y0 at the bottom going up, I think it's Y0 at the top going down. So I need to backwards 
are up and down cases. Give me a second. And with the power of editing magic, we're back. I just switched our up and down cases. Let's see how this one goes. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> I just had it upside backwards. Lame. All right. Let's just play all the test cases and see where it breaks. Okay, cool. We have a break here. Where did you break? Ooh, you found an infinite loop. Oh, we're not setting our resetting our max and min X's. That's what we have failed to do. So we need to update our max and min as we get more information. So if we know that we're going left, then our max X is equal to current X. If we know we're going right, then our minimum X is equal to our current X. Similarly, if we're going up, then our, um, hold on, this is backwards. If we know we're going up, then this is our new max Y. And if we're going down, this is our new minimum Y. And then repeat that up here. And there we go. Boom. Now we're actually performing a binary search. Let's go through. Oh, no. Batman moved weird. <laughs> so let, let's see what happened here. So we start at zero. And it's bottom right. So that means we should go to 2525, which we did. It's above and to the left. So you went from to 2512. Oh, did I get upside backwards up here? No, min x equals current x, max x equals current x. So why is it? If it's located above and to the left, it should move to 1212. So something weird is with our up and down. I got it upside backwards somehow. So if it's up, yep, I got I got our up and down backwards again. Oh gosh, why is it like this? So fun fact, it's uh graphics programming also has the Y0 at the top going down typically. It always messes me up. It's not the way you learn it in math, and it's super weird. Let's try this one again. Excuse me? No, no, I didn't get it backwards. What am I doing wrong here? Well, let's figure it out. And with the power of editing magic, I was able to cut out my debugging. It's super silly. Remember what I was saying about dry code? This is the type of stuff it present, prevents. Right here. Also copy, copying and pasting. I made a mistake. I used max on both of these. This should be min. works like a charm. So let's play through all of our test cases and see if we correctly got, oh, are we gonna have a failure on each freaking test case? Well, let me see if this at least does the last one. Okay, it's just this one, evasive. Uh, Nan, what? Oh, does it give us just like a garbage input here? Hold on. Hold on a minute, sir. So the only way we get NAN, NAN means not a number. Oh, you can't even see behind me. Well, so in our output stream here, we got NAN. There's not a really good place to put me. I'll put us here. Which means not a number. That means that the X we were given was a bad X. So let's do like an error and let's put up what X zero, Y zero, W and H are. 
Five ninety eight hundred a hundred. So that should be right. And how do we get Nan? Why are you Nan? Okay, let's. Should just go up and left. Why are you weird? What's going on? There should be zero cases where Kurex is not a number. So something funky is going on. Kur X. Let's go ahead and output that right here at the end, right before we console log. And see what it thinks it is. Yeah, right there. It thinks it's Nan. So what happened to Kurex up here? To totally mess it up. It it would have been something in here. So we error Curex and see what those look like. So console error is just a way to output information to the console, which are these red things you see down here. Five undefined. Ooh. Why is min x undefined? Is it because I got lazy with my definition here? I bet so. How do we not run into that in one of the earlier test cases? Lol. So I think that the way we were defining it up there on the same line, it just defined the first one as undefined instead of zero like I expected it to. There we go. Problem solved. Our double binary search. Double donezo. The next thing we'd want to do is come in here and clean this up a little bit. And like I said, dry it up. It's not dry at all right now. Um, but that's that's good enough for me. Oh, it gave us 100% still for some reason. Don't. I'd never want to share that. Never. But yeah, that's a little peek at uh, what I do when I'm not streaming. A little bit of programming. It's a lot like puzzle solving. Even though these were like actually literally puzzles. In real life, that's all it is on the day-to-day -day as well. It's just solving puzzle after puzzle after puzzle and i enjoy it a lot i think it's a lot of fun but i think it's a particular type of person <laughs> that finds that sort of thing enjoyable i hope you liked it i know this is a little bit different than our usual content but let me know in the comments down below do we want more content like this it's kind of off the wall and weird do we want to just stick to games bastion i never want to see program again let me know and if you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. All of that helps all the normal YouTube stuff. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. See ya!